Hi everyone, I'm James, M0YOM. Uh, welcome to episode two of Rebuilding My Station. Um, I had planned to do something completely different this week, but uh, the weather has unfortunately not been um, uh, uh, helpful and uh, yeah, we, I can't really uh, can't really do that so that'll be for another another episode um, so instead we're gonna just work on some bits and pieces have a look at a bit of equipment um, and we'll start by uh, starting to get the old switches out of the uh, out of the cabinets so I'll um, I'll just turn you around and then we can uh, we can get get this started so let's get some of these out of here Oh, I hope uh, hope you all enjoyed episode one. Uh, I know it's been a few weeks since um, since that came out. I've uh, been a little busy with with work and um, and sort of family stuff, so I haven't really had a chance to uh, to do any more radio stuff. Uh, but with a bit of luck, that will change this week. So I'm gonna pop. Uh, it's horrible in here. Um, I need to give it a real clean out. So as I mentioned on um, on the last episode. Um, let's bring you around here so you can see a little better with a bit of luck. There we go. Let's get you set up there and we'll get you zoomed in a bit. There we go. Um, so as I mentioned on the, um, oh, on the last episode, we're replacing these six packs with uh, an Antenna Genius switch. Um, the Array Solution six packs are a really good bits of kit, um, but technology's just moved along quite a bit since uh, since these came out. And obviously, you need to make some kind of remote um, some kind of remote control system in order to control these. Whereas the Antenna Genius, uh, it's all just built in, um, which is really nice. And you only need a, a network connection, um, which luckily I've got. Uh, I've got all over the place here, so uh, it makes it nice and nice and convenient. Um, I'll get these out of here. If anyone's got any ideas what I could do with um, with these old six bit packs, because as far as I know they still work okay, um, we'll open them up and have a have a little look later on. And make sure um, they've they've not fared too badly. Um, hopefully, there's nothing <laughs> nothing living inside them. A bit of luck, they're okay, but we'll um, we'll get these uh, get these taken out. Let's move that one out of the way. Uh. There we go. Get that one out of the way. And while I'm doing this, um, there's a couple of questions that uh, that popped up on the last on the last video. So the first one was why um, why am I not putting a beam up? Well, to put it simply, there are two reasons at the moment. Um, the first one is planning. Um, if I'm going to put a beam up, I'd need some kind of tower. Uh, and where we live is, is green belt. So in the UK, there are certain areas that are a little bit more restricted as far as planning permission is concerned. Um, and we're already putting in a, a planning application for some some building work on the on the property. So. Um, I don't want to uh, to jeopardise that by trying to uh, trying to get permission for a tower at the same time, uh, and also, whilst you know we want some some fairly big antennas. Um, I mean the the DX Commander Nabula is is you know is a large antenna. Um, we uh, we want to try and keep it looking looking relatively somewhat low impact um, <laughs> and not spoil the view out here in the uh, in the field. Um, so. We'll just pop these, uh, pop these back in there. These cabinets are fantastic. I can't remember what the, I think they're Schneider Electric cabinets. Um, although this one doesn't appear to be quite as watertight as uh, as the other two, which is uh, a bit of a shame. So yeah, if if you've got any ideas of what I could do with these old six packs, because they were quite expensive originally, um, we used to use them in uh, in an old uh, radio. Uh, station that we had years ago, um, myself and uh, and Callum put together, um, and actually these ones used to be used for a, um, a high power filtering, high power stub filter system. So they'd switch in, um, switch in and out stub filters um, for uh, for some high power filtering. Um, 
The other uh, question that cropped up um, is, uh, am I planning on using a single microphone for both radios, or for all radios? Uh, and if so, how am I planning on doing it? Well, I'm actually gonna make a video on that. The answer is, I am planning on using a single mic for both radios, uh, and I'm doing it by using a, a, a mixer in order to uh, kind of root all the audio, but I'm, I'm actually gonna make a, um, make a video specifically on that because it's quite interesting and some of you uh, some of you might find it uh, might find it quite useful right that's the six packs out we'll uh, we'll get those back inside uh, uh, i think we'll take these out while we're at it might as well while we're out here we've got all the tools oh i bet i haven't got the right size with me no i haven't we'll have to come back out for that we'll go and grab some more tools there we go got the right tools now Never got the right, right size uh, screws for anything. Right, there we go. I'm also um, I'm planning on I'm planning on put a uh, putting a radio in the car as well. Um, I've just changed my car and uh, I'd quite like a radio in there um, but I'm not sure which one to uh, which one to go with um, I have got an old really old little um, Yaesu 2 and 70 thing I don't remember which uh, which model it is um, I think I bought it off a of Callum years ago but um, at the moment I'm leaning towards the the Yaesu FTM 500 DE um, I don't know if uh, if any of you have got any suggestions if you have, uh, ideally I'd like you know two and seventy, at least fifty watts on two meters, uh, preferably a hundred watts. Um, but I don't mind overly if uh, if it's only only fifty watts. Uh, HF would be nice, but to be honest, something something relatively small and uh, and modern. Uh, so if you've got any recommendations, pop uh, pop them down in the uh, in the comments below. Because um, I don't I don't really keep up that much with the uh, with the mobile rigs at the moment, and. Um, it would be nice. Uh, it would be nice to uh, to have a radio permanently installed in the uh, in the car. Uh, also, antennas, mobile antennas. Um, I've got an old uh, two and seventy whip um, with a with a mag mount, um, but as I say, it's not really something I've uh, not really something I've um, kept up to date on. I don't know what's good, what's bad. Um, so, if anyone has any recommendations, I'd be I'd be really interested to um, to hear about those. Right, we've got this in. We'll probably have to drill some new holes in this uh, in this back panel, um, but the back panel comes off, and we'll mount the um, we'll mount the antennas, uh, the antenna switch uh, probably up here somewhere. Um, we'll have to get some uh, uh, some power and um, power and data through here to um, uh, to run it, um, and we'll probably strip most of this out at some point, and uh, all the rest of these horrible nasty cables. They're all mouldy inside. Um, we had some more to get in and um, give everything a good clean up. Uh, I might need some more through connectors as well because these these aren't looking too um, too clever. <laughs> this is what happens when you get part way through a station build and then life gets in the way and it gets left for for a long time. But I want to get all this uh, all this back on the air and working within the next couple of months. I mean, with a bit of luck, we should be back on air, at least temporarily, with, uh, with some new coax um, in the next few weeks, um, if, if the weather holds out. Uh, right, we'll get all this back inside and um, I'll see you up in the shack. Right, we're back up in the shack now. Um, it's got even more messier since the last time you, uh, you saw it. <laughs> um, but... As I understand it, things have to get worse before they get better. So um, uh, we did move the uh, I did move the speakers um, a little lower because they were they were way up there um, and brought them down. It's made a made a big difference to be honest. Um, and uh, a couple of old rigs out for a for a, a, a secret project that I'll I'll tell you all about at um, at some point. It's the old um, Yaesu FT two thousand there. Um, it was a great rig. That was my main rig for a, for a long time. And um, an old Kenwood uh, TS two thousand. Um, that uh, that needs to go in for repair. Need to get that uh, get that into Martin Lynch for fix the uh, the finals of um, 
have gone on it unfortunately uh, in the uh, I think it's the two meter uh, two meter ones but we'll get that in for repair at some point uh, at some point soon all right let's have a look at these uh, these six packs then there we go so for any of you who haven't seen a, um, a six pack uh, I mean they're fantastic they were they were really really good for um, and still are really good um, for a lot of things but they're basically a, a six-way switch so you can uh, run any of um, six antennas to uh, either of two radios um, but they're they're essentially kind of dumb units uh, they don't um, they don't have any control mechanism built into them uh, so you have to you have to have some kind of controller uh, whereas the uh, the more modern um, antenna genius is uh, uh, you can control it through all sorts of means it, it's got all manner of different uh, different options now with a bit of luck nothing's going to run out at us here um, when we uh, when we take this uh, take this off because it's been in that cabinet for uh, many many years and I don't know about you guys but I'm not a huge fan of creepy crawlies running out at me um, there we go let's see what it's like oh it's not too bad oh dear I think this might have had it but we'll see um, I don't know if you can see that it's um, but the, um, the relays are all um, super corroded um, yeah, I don't know if they're going to be salvageable or not. Um, it's a shame because these were, I mean, they're fantastic and they they, they were quite expensive. But um, I don't know, what do you think? Have, have any of you guys got any ideas? If, if you have, leave a comment because um, I would like to I would like to salvage these and be able to use them in another project somewhere. But um, I think I think these contacts, have, oh, they might still be OK. You might just need a bit of taking apart and cleaning up on the relays. Um, Needs uh, needs a little bit of work certainly, but because uh, they are designed, they are designed to go outside. Um, I've actually got a um, uh, like a U-bolt uh, fitting on the uh, on the case, um, so you can mount them, you know, on a pole, up a tower, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so they are designed to be out and about. But uh, there's a, there's a lesson to be learned if um, if you've got equipment in a in a cabinet outdoors, it might seem like a good idea to seal it up. Um, and it really isn't because, uh, you know, temperature fluctuations, the moisture levels change. Um, and unfortunately, what happens is uh, you end up with condensation on things. It's far better to have the cabinet have some ventilation and a way of any water, if it does get in there, to get out uh, rather than sealing it up tight. Uh, it's a lesson, uh, a lesson I've learned the hard way, unfortunately. Uh, but if any of you ever put in an outdoor cabinet, um, you know, make sure there's some ventilation you know, on the base of it or, or the side. Some cabinets have got uh, kind of fluted vents, um, so you, it doesn't allow the water in. Um, but just don't don't seal them up completely because you will end up um, wrecking what is it, ever's inside. That's a bit of a shame. Right, with the disappointment of the inside of the six packs out the way, <laughs> let's look at something a little more exciting. So I did delivery from Martin Lynch today. Um, this is actually for some um, for some development work that I'm doing. Um, so some of you may know, uh, but if you don't, um, I developed some software for the Acom uh, line of amplifiers, so the Acom 2000, um, Acom 500 up to the 2020S, um, called Acom Director. Uh, I, if uh, if any of you are interested, I'll do a video on it. Um, I'll do a video on it at some point. Uh, but I need to um, I need to get um, some improvements made to that and and uh, uh, some extra features. So I decided to order myself a dummy load because uh, you certainly don't want to be transmitting randomly at you know, all hours of the day um, just to test things uh, move that out of the way and I've had this on order for, for a little while it's actually the um, it's the, the Palstar um, 2000 watt dummy load um, and uh, the DL2K uh, which as I say has been on order for, for some time um, and they couldn't get stock so I think it was about two months nearly two months they couldn't get stock so I phoned them the other day and it just so happens um, that they had a second hand one uh, in pretty much perfect condition by the looks of it. Um, so we'll get this out of here and have a little look. Um, I'm assuming you all know what a dummy load is, uh, but if you don't, essentially it's uh, uh, it looks like an antenna to the rigs uh, and just lets you transmit without really transmitting. Um, 
so that's quite nice it's in it's in remarkably good condition actually uh, for a second hand one i think this will do uh, two and a half thousand watts peak um and i i think the continuous is uh, is about two thousand watts for um i think it's for a minute um but that's really nice uh, and we'll be using that on the uh, on the acom amplifiers when i'm working on the um, working on acom director uh, so i'm not transmitting on on any bands that uh, you don't want to be right so i think that's uh, that's probably everything for this episode um sorry it's been a bit bitty but um you know as with any any station build or any project like this there's going to be bits and pieces that need to be uh, need to be done as well and really the weather has got in the way of um uh, of this week's uh, original plans um i was planning on getting the um the going uh, support post in uh, for the uh, for the antenna and um, and getting the coax routed back up through the loft and into the uh, into the shack so that we can at least uh, start to get that on air um, or start to get the station back on air uh, i've got to pop over and see callum um, soon and pick up some parts for the um, uh, for the nebula uh, some more wire for the radials and a few of the bits and pieces uh, so hopefully um, maybe next week uh, we'll get that in um, uh, possibly you know the week after it just depends how uh, how the weather goes more than anything else um, and uh, obviously there's you know, work and family and other things to, to fit around it um, I'm also going to do a video um, there's a couple of people asked about um, uh, some of the audio elements so that I'm going to do a dedicated video just on the audio components of the um, uh, of the new station uh, because it is quite interesting um, and uh, I think somewhat unique uh, I'm sure I'm not the only person who's done it many many probably have but um, I think it'd be worth taking a look at that uh, it might give some of you some uh, some interesting ideas uh, so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed it uh, remember to uh, uh, like if you've got a comment leave it down below uh, and uh, and subscribe um, you know there's uh, there's a lot more fun stuff to uh, to come see you all soon bye